This is a Gorilla Podcast Network production. Ladies and gentlemen, I like to know. Are you ready for start time? And now, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Spinner's Digest Podcast. Podcast. What's going on in this? Uh, what's going on around like 2002, 2003 for you? Uh, I was DJing. I was in locally still. I was still local. Um, I did a couple travel gigs, um, but nothing major. I, I think I went to Virginia, uh, but again, nothing major. Um, I actually ended up getting a job. Uh, I was working then. And I wasn't DJing full time. I was working yeah. then, and um, you know, I was getting a couple gigs here and there. Uh, There's a couple times in my life where I I thought DJing was gonna be it, and I remember two, three times I quit my job just to DJ because I got hot for a second, yeah. and then the gigs dried up, and then I'm like here unemployed, <laughs> you know. So that happened quite a few during that era, um, prior to 2006, and. Um, by then I, I was doing parties here and there i was doing i was doing blends and i was that's when the internet kind of became a bigger deal and and or at least for me in 2002 three four five six i be, kind of became one of those internet people when the internet was blowing up the, the so the you were early on it yeah did you force not, not i wasn't early no I, was, I really wasn't i wasn't late well, but i wasn't well, early did you foresee did you foresee the other galaxy days 2002 how huh? <laughs> Drop a bomb for the galaxy, because you guys, you guys know Napster. This is before. This is before Napster. Yeah. Uh, that what was it? Audio Galaxy. Okay. Okay. Audio Galaxy was right. You have peer to peer sharing. Like you had. Um. I guess most younger people. You guys know like LimeWire. I'm. I. I come from Napster and on. Napster. Napster and on. So LimeWire. Napster. Bear li- share and all to that. me, LimeWire was life. You know, that was a few years later than that. So, so for 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 me is Napster and on. But go on, go okay. on, go on. So for you know, there was Napster and there was there was a whole bunch of of, of uh, other places. Or the Galaxy was very popular because you were able to, to research a song, right? And you be able to like put the name on it, and you will see the users who had it. And then every time that user will log on, it automatically will download to you. That's I, dope. I, I think all the other no, the other ones weren't like that. Right? You you had to find out who was online. To be able to get the song, mm-hmm. right? Okay, no, this is you were able to put the name, and then you know it will show you what user would have it. I, I, <laughs> I forgot exactly how it worked. How long was uh? How long would you have to wait to download a song, bro? Overnight, overnight <laughs> to download a song, bro. Yo, you kids are mass spoiled out here, man. We get songs in two seconds nowadays. Overnight, we had to wait. I, I had to use my AOL. AOL, you know what I'm saying? And the the dial up, the dial up, and we the, mentioned it. Dial up internet, and if somebody called, you were fucked. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to say it was 56K, the connection back yeah. then, which is, like, ridiculous. Uh, but, yeah, so it, took, it took me a whole night to download a song. And yeah. So, all the Galaxy days, that's why I got a lot of, like, uh, house music, a lot of white labels and stuff. And so, when uh, when the end came for Order Galaxy, they got sued by the, you know, this is probably one of the first major websites to be shut down because of piracy. So, by the time they disbanded, um, this group of guys, I don't know exactly who, I, I want to say this group of guys, but there was another... Um, similar thing going on and it was called the blue box network right and the blue box network you were able to have um like separate separate uh, i guess rooms if you want to call it mm-hmm. and where people will create their own little sharing music thing and when when order galaxy went and the blue box network these guys created lmp uh, LMP comes from from the Blue Box Network comes from file sharing, Oof. and so they created LMP. Um, it was three individuals. Uh, one of them I can't remember his name, but it was three individuals, and uh, each of them had the role. Um, I'm not gonna get into names, but it was the guy who kind of came up with the name. There was a computer geek, and there was the other guy who was a designer. And um, this guy just kind of made his thing, and eventually, when the Blue Box Network went went off, they built the website. And basically, the rest is history. If you really want to take it there, <laughs> the rest is history. Shout out to LMP. Yes, so making I joined, history. Yes, yeah, so I joined in 2006. Oof. They put an open casting for DJs. They wanted to start a kind of a DJ crew uh, in 2005, 
And by then, I was already doing a lot of things. Like, I was known for my mixtapes. I was doing mixtapes. I was spread all over the street. Yeah. So, all over the place. So, so ladies and gentlemen, you heard Nino's been dropping mixtapes since 97 ish, 98? 97. 97. 97. Yes. How, it's just really quick, how many mixtapes off the top of your head have you recorded? Just a rough number. I don't know, bro, because at the CDs, I was very early in the CD game. Yes. I, I ended up buying a, a Tascam 4X recorder and a Tascam 5000, which was able to record CDs and Ooh. CDRWs. Ooh. That's when I started doing my CDs. <laughs> and this is early in the, I mean, just to tell you, the double one used to record 4X the fastest it yes. went. So that goes to show you how long, and this was a standalone unit. You didn't, it was mm -hmm. in a computer. So that came out fairly early. I, I, I got on that fairly early. I remember paying 2100 for those two things. Um, so I didn't do that many mixtapes. I, I it went to CD pretty fast. I want to say I was doing CDs already by two thousand, by two thousand, and you maybe, and, and maybe even prior to ringing, that. ringing yeah, out here. Ninety nine. I think I was I was already doing uh, CDs. Okay, okay, that's what's you up. know what I was doing CDs in ninety eight. I okay, think. I, I want to say late, late, late ninety eight. I was doing CDs. So uh, mixtapes in total, I probably did maybe twenty, thirty. Not even I. It wasn't that have, many. What? Are you serious? I thought you did more. I thought you would uh, have like no. Like I, well, I did the Latin House joints, and then I. I did, thought you would have been up in the triple digits. Oh no, no, not at. I mean, mixtapes, including CDs. Yes, but mixtapes, cassettes. I'm talking about cassettes. No, 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 no. no. I'm just talking about overall. Your work, overall, what body of work? Your uh, body of work, man. Uh, no, I have a lot. I have a lot. Yeah, that's I, triple I, digits. Uh definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, you know. 100 maybe 200 okay. oh, 100 100 plus 100 yeah. bro that's not the sneeze at don't do yeah, that's, that's not the sneeze yeah, at bro thinking like i don't want to exaggerate but i want to say you know yeah, may, bro, maybe bro you were you were part of the mixtape you, yeah. you 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 were part 100 of plus. you were part of the mixtape game and you you know you you were also part of you know you were the latin dj trust me bro i know <laughs> yes trust me so, i got your your the, the those early joints all right so so getting back so there was an open call for for the LMP. You were saying yes, and um, I applied, and they didn't they didn't take me. They didn't you know they didn't they didn't pay me no mind, and then months later I reapply, and somebody reaches out to me. Jose, shout out to Jose. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Shout out to Jose. I, I'm not gonna get into his nickname. Let's just call him Jose. Okay? Exactly. We know who we talk about. Exactly. I don't want to. He's professional out here now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Jose reaches out to me and I'm telling him, yeah, I'm a Nino. I've been doing, doing this, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you a Nino from the mixtapes? I'm like, yeah, I've done some mixtapes. <coughs> and then he sends me copies of my own mixtapes. Are you this guy? I'm like, yeah, that's me. And I'm like, oh, shit. You, El Nino, you that El Nino. I'm like, oh, yeah, what's up? Like, we would love to have you. And I'm like, yeah, this is actually the second time I apply. And, you, you know, you ignore me the first time around. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, we didn't know. We didn't know. I'm like, all right. So... That's how I came. That's how I came into LMP, uh, and because of my experience, uh, I was already a veteran. LMP was very, very young, yes. very, very, very young at the time. And when I came in, I was already, I already had been a promoter. I was DJing already for a few years, so I had a general knowledge. I was doing mixtapes uh, nationwide, internationally. I was selling mixtapes. Yes, yes. By then, we kind of skipped over that, but yeah, I, yeah, I, we kind of no, 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 we did. But but you know what? I'm glad you mentioned that. Like people need to know that you, you, your mixtapes were flying around in, internationally in, in Japan and France. I was oh hot. wow, <laughs> dropping yo, yes. just dragging out here. <laughs> yes, I actually still have. You know the the people out of Japan. Uh, they found me because my CDs were in, in L.A. Right. And they <coughs> took my mixtapes and made real CDs. Like, instead of being greenbacks, you know, it's, it's, CDRs, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they made real CDs. That's what and they, I actually have some copies of those. Wow. With Japanese lettering. Wow. I still do. I got that That's dope. Stash. Wow, man. Not too many when, people, when you want to see it, let me know. I can show yo, you. Yo, not too many people out here can say that, man. Got to give it up to you for that, man. That's fucking dope. That's fucking dope. Like I said, man, yo, that CD time, I mean, that mixtape era was just, the those early 2000s, that mixtape era was just... It was just it, it was just out of this world, man. It was out of this world, and yeah, and and else. and you were and you were making money. Yeah, I make I make real good money. When I was doing mixtapes prior to the Don't becoming hot, I was doing pretty good. And then when the Don't became hot, it, I kind of blew up. Yeah, I was doing. I, I again, this is another area in my life. I I complete I, I completely stopped working. Like I I did this full time. Yeah, I had a job then, and I decided that. 
I don't know. It was kind of just a fuck it moment. He was like, you know, I'm fed up with this job. I, and I was the manager of my job. I'm fed up with this job. I'm going to quit. I'm going to do music. And yeah. to this day, bro, I haven't looked back. Bro. I haven't had a job since. <laughs> this is uh, 2005, maybe, I think. I mean, I, I after that, like, I remember. give it up to the dedication, man. After that. I, it's not I, easy. It's yeah. not easy, man. It's not easy. I ended up getting a job a little bit after that. Well, years after that. Um, a friend of mine needed her help, and they asked me to to come and work uh, with them. And the reason why I took the job was, and getting a little bit off subject, the reason why uh -huh. I took the job, by then I was a promoter, right? So the reason I took this job because it was making, it was doing deliveries. Okay. And I took the job was because it was, first of all, they told me that I only had to work 20 hours. I'm like, 20 hours? I don't do nothing during the week, you know? I did it in the weekends, but I don't do nothing during the week. 20 hours is nothing. I could do 20 hours. But the reason why I took it is because it was doing deliveries. I was able to drive around Connecticut putting my nice flyers there you go. And, and selling mixtapes so i was doing there's always something behind it exactly i was doing oh. their work and my work <laughs> and that's how you 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 know you had a hustle yeah if you, Bro, you if, have, if you know if you know about club bandone back then is you used to see the flyers is because I, that was me driving around yeah man, like I hey, did the man. Work. you you, you got to push it however you can man. you got to push it and that's how i did that's why i took the job but that's what's yeah, up. i really haven't <laughs> i haven't really looked back since i haven't that's you what's know, up man I, I've do, i do this you know full time um but I feel like we we been skipping a lot no, of no, stuff. No, 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 no. But yeah, the mixtapes. Yeah, I became popular with the mixtapes. And now, let me ask you a question because you said that you applied again. What made you apply again? Because this is a very it's very simple, and I'm gonna answer probably all your questions right now. Every song you download it, and doesn't matter what website, peer to peer program, anywhere you download a song, it will have those initials LMP. And I always wanted to know where. So it was. did you foresee them being something? To reckon with because like like you said I just wanted to be part of a crew I just okay. wanted to be part of something and okay. I thought that there were in, in everything I've downloaded to that point in my life that was Latin and maybe even some English stuff had those initials I'm like yo these oh. people are these people are powerful this, oh, this, is, okay. this is the big gang yeah. you know I want to be part of this gang gang yeah gang gang <laughs> it was big so I wanted to be part of it and like I said I already had been DJ for a couple of years so when I came in pretty much right after I came in I started making changes and I think I had this conversation with you um, you know LMP was very young and I was already a veteran well i was already in the business for a couple yes, of years exactly i started structuring more the the they started to listen to me because obviously i was older than they are yeah you know so i started structuring lmp a little bit and that's when we dropped our first mixtape um which is dominican parade 2007 oof, oof, so our first, classic our first co collective mixtape actually i, I want to be specific about that First collective. There was mixed six before that. Yes, but, but no, no, no. I, but that was the classic, though. That was the yeah, classic. But I as far as LMP, a company, that was our first mixtape. Was the 2007 Dominican Parade. One more. Um, we also that was the year we participated in Dominican Parade uh, for the first yes. time, and we're kind of a staple there. We're there every year since then. So, would you consider yourself like you're part of the first batch of of DJs from LMP? The first batch of yeah, I would say so. Yes, yes. I was part of the first batch. I so was like the, first the, family. Yeah, first family. I wasn't the original. No, 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 no. I'm not saying original, but you were part. Of, of, yeah, I was. You were the there first for the batch. Yes, the first I was batch. there from the beginning. Nice. And when, like I said, when I went as a collector, that was the first mixtape that we that actually did the duplication and the printing for the CD uh, for that project for the, for the 2007. Shout out to my brother and his friends who were young back then who helped me pack the CDs. Oh, yeah. packing CDs. Oh, Hold on, can I get a bomb for packing CDs? Oh, yes. Shout out to my brother doing the inserts, and you had yeah. to stay there all. Yo, know, that was a bitch, and you would get fucking paper Bro, cuts. I, <laughs> I, I broke night packing that first. We did ten thousand copies, I think, and wow. five to ten thousand copies. And I broke night finishing the last couple hundred I had left. And sh like I said, shout out to him and his friends on the w drive down to the Dominican Parade because we would leave here like five in the morning to be over there like early. And on the first one. They, the whole ride from Waterbury to downtown Manhattan, they were packing CDs while I was driving. Uh, so definitely shout out to them. So that was the first project we kind of did as a team. It was 2007, and, you know, the Dominican Parade was kind of our first big thing that we did. And those things that I made happen because I already had the connections. Um, okay, that's what's up. Um, I didn't even yeah. know that. Yeah, that was the kind of first thing. Yeah, it kind of happened. I mean, I, later on, a couple of years after that, uh, maybe two years after that, I kind of became head DJ, uh, the boss of the DJs, or the, or the head DJ is what I always refer to as that. And um, I want to say 2008. Yeah, I think 2008, I was already. Yeah, by 2008, I became head DJ, and I was the first uh, or president of the, of the DJs of LMP, and that was in 2008 um, by then. 
That's what's up, man. That's what's so, up. That's so that's so that's my history with LMP. Okay. And then I was I was head DJ or president of the DJs for a couple years. Um, I think two. It wasn't even that long. It was two or three. And I kind of resigned. Uh, it was just too much for me to handle. Yeah. I mean, we had so many guys. It was just too much. Um, I was in charge of basically, you know, putting the projects together and uh, making sure everybody's on point. Exactly. And making taking new DJs in and letting some guys go. Um, so I was that guy. And that's, you know, I did it for a couple of years. And then we divided into the responsibility between three people, I think, or four. And then after that, we came with the chapters. The chapters okay. came in yeah. maybe five years after yeah. that. And, that's what's you know, up. That's where we are now with the chapters. Exactly, exactly. That's what's up. That's what's up. So that's a nice little LMP history. But yes. we're going to get back to El Nino. Yes. So when does this guy come into your life? Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys don't know that voice, if you're listening to this and you don't know about Sasa, this guy is named Huey Dunbar, and he and he, this is something we talked about that you knew this already because you didn't you didn't just guess this, did you, bro? Come on, man, <laughs> come on, man. They don't call me DJ Stutters. Yo, I don't got my own podcast for nothing, man. I know my history, man. Shout out to Huey. Yeah, shout out. So, so he's part of a group called DLG, and you, yes, the lead singer, yes, he was the lead singer of DLG, which was like a urban salsa fusion. The first, first. I mean, Break, that I could remember. Bro, nobody the gives these guys credit for what they did. Uh, not at all. Mm. And, and and they did stuff that people are doing to this day. To this day. The yes. same formula. The same formula. And they were the originators. But let's, original. not, let's not get too James far the, off track. James the Barber, Fragancia, and Huey Dunbar. Oh, wow. The legendary names. Legendary names. Yes. So so you were able to be his uh, tour DJ. Yes. Um, when, him or DLGs? Uh, no, him. 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 Okay. He, so had broken up, he had broken up. Uh, DLG had broken up, and he was doing his own thing. And he had dropped one album, two albums he had dropped already. And then he was, uh, he kind of wanted to take separate ways from Sony. He was signed to Sony and do his own thing. And that's when I came in into his life, basically. But then I was doing mixtapes, and I was friends with, I was friends with DJ Nelson, right? And DJ what Nelson. What year we're talking? This has to be 2005, four or three. So this is pre LMP. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, no, no, no. This is after LMP. Okay, this so you were LMP 2006. No, wait. LMP was. You said 2006. 2006 was LMP. No, it had to be before that. I got my years wrong. See, you're gonna make me have to look. So bro, it was, look, so, bro. All right, so the so the so the, the LMP mix it was 2007, but I was already in LMP prior to that. Yeah, was our first as a collective. Yes, and I joined LMP in 2006. Six. All right. So Huey Dunbar is. This is after that. This is okay. uh, 2007, eight. Okay, okay. Um, so I was friends with DJ Nelson. Um, I remember at, when we started, before LMP started working with artists directly because that's what we do now. Uh, before we were just a website to get music from. Yeah, exactly. Um, DJ Nelson was probably the, one of the first people that we featured on, on the website as as uh, as an artist. Like, oh, you can get his music from here. Okay. You know, he was, he was the first. And we kept this ad there. Uh, for a while, because that was a, kind of a big deal, and you know I was cool with Nelson. So cool. Uh, so Nelson introduced me to a guy, which I don't want to name because then people are gonna see like, oh, now I know how he knows how he got that. Hey, so he introduced bro. me to this guy, to this engineer. Let's just say, right? <laughs> I, I, and I don't want to say, you know, because a lot of people over the years are always wondering, yo, how come I'm so connected and I'm able to get all these? Let's just say acapellas, right? From, to not para no decir otra cosa. How I'm able to get all acapellas, and it's because this engineer that I know. And DJ Nelson introduced me to the engineer, and me and the engineer became cool. And the engineer, somebody who's been in the music business for many years, um, and the engineer introduced me introduces me to Huey Dunbar. He tells Huey Dunbar, like, listen, this guy, I mean, you know, he's he's all over the place. He's a dope DJ. You know, he travels. He does this. He does that. So he introduces me to Huey, and Huey says, well, listen, I need a DJ for the road. I'm no longer in DOG. Um, I don't have a band. I'm just basically doing track shows. And I need a DJ for the road. And he takes me on a trip. Um, the first time we traveled, I went to New York to the Colombian consulate in New York. And I had to get a, a work visa to go to Colombia. And in 2006, Christmas 2006, or it could be 2007, but it was Christmas time. I got the flyer. I, I, I will have to look it up. But it was 2006, 2007. I took my first trip uh, with him to Colombia. We went to Cali. So your first show with this guy was in Cali. 
your first show with this guy is overseas, Colombia. It's in Cali, my first show with him. And let me tell you how big of a show it was. I mean, I think to this day, it's kind of, it's probably the biggest thing I've ever done was that. Um, it was it was actually a reggaeton show. Reggaeton was already bubbling oh, by yeah. then. Oh, no, of course. And um, he was invited as, because, you know, Colombians are big in salsa. So he was invited to be part of the show because, you know, his salsa is urban. So he was invited to be part of the show. And it was held in a place called Estadio Pascual Guerrero. And it's um, it's fifty five thousand people capacity, and that day wow. they had about forty thousand people there, and that was the biggest crowd I've, 40, I've ever forty thousand people. Yeah, that was the first time. Damn! Oh, sound bite! <laughs> that was the first time I was in front of that many people. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was. It was I was very nervous. I, oh, sure, sure, sure. I, I, I would imagine we did sound check. I remember we went and we he was practicing and I was pressing the buttons and and this is funny because that's this is when I met um and in, in this tour that's when I met um DJ Tasmania who was signing Lennox uh first DJ and um he was there and this is when the Crocs came into style, I remember. Because he was wearing Crocs. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this girl you wearing, bro? <laughs> He's out here I, looking crazy. Yeah, and I, I wasn't I wasn't into that. And and that was, was um Yeah, that was that was that stadium, man. That was that was that was very big. Oh, wow. And, wow. Um, so that's the person who put the person who put everybody on to the show was actually Hector's father. Hector's father had a Colombian girlfriend then. And her, her father was the guy who did um uh, the big cu- the big uh thing it's, it's a feria de cali the big the big thing they do over there feria de cali um I, big I, I i don't want to quote that as, as right or wrong because i i'm from medellin and i've okay. I, I, um so i want to think is our thing is la feria de las flores okay That's our well, thing. well there i think is a feria de cali they call okay. it okay and um he's the guy that org- organizes that and his daughter was dating Hector's father and Hector wow. Father kind of put this together, and this Hector is Father what, out here, yeah, getting yeah. it in Colombia. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yes, he was. He Yo, was, he well, was that dude. And this is when I became cool with Rafi Pina. I knew Rafi Pina prior to this. I knew Rafi Pina because of his dad. Um, when I was in the record pool days, which is something we kind of skipped over, right there. Yeah, we'll get the, back r- to it. Yeah, we'll get back to part two. Yeah, yeah, we'll say that for part two. Yeah, so I became cool with his dad, who passed away and left them Pina Records. Um, and I, that's where I met Rafi. I already knew Cyan and Lennox because they had Early. Come, they had come to perform in Connecticut. Yes, Zion has a sister or a half sister who's from Waterbury. Yes. And when they came out with the first album, and I remember playing their music, and she would tell me, "Yes, yeah, my brother," and I was like, "Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay." Till um, I was cool also with um, with people from White Line Records, Thagos Camp, and those people, yeah. Sign Lennox, they all got signed to White Line Records. So I was cool with them. I was cool with Elias and his brother Noel. And um, Elias and yeah, and Noel. Noel was the guy that worked for them. And I, I can't remember how I know Noel, but I know Noel through the music industry. Some one way or another, I met him. So when they came to Connecticut, they're like, "Yo, come through." They took care of me. Like, Ben, come down with me. So when I went, they went to this concert, and she's like, I'm, "You know," and I see her there, and I say, "What's up?" And she's like, "See, but Ben, para que salvemos mi hermano Felix." And I'm like, yeah, okay. So then we went in, and he said, he said, see, it's a mi hermana. And then you know, me and him started talking. We actually became cool. So after that, he started doing a lot of stuff in New York. And all the time he would come to New York, he hit me up. And I met with him, and we hung out. So when I was in Colombia, he was there, and I already, you know, I already had, ex- you, you know. You already had a relationship with him. Yeah. I already had a relationship with Zion, and he was cool. And the next I knew a little bit, he was kind of shy. Yeah. Or he come off as a little bit of come miela, uh, but he was just shy. Yeah. Just and this is when his wife or his girlfriend used to manage them because she was their manager i didn't know that wow. yeah yeah there you go yeah that's a that's a tsd exclusive <laughs> oh <laughs> yes it was his wife or, or, or girlfriend or whoever it was it was their manager back then so yeah so we went to colombia and that's when i and i met the laghetto that day too and i also had his number he we exchanged numbers by then i had dropped a mixtape called uh, i used to do a lot of blends uh and i dropped a mixtape called uh remixes dj nino the remixes and I had a lot of blends, and I had blends where I can hit the laghetto in there, and I gave the laghetto. I gave all of them actually copies of my mixtape. So anyway, this was my my first experience. There were the the forty thousand uh, people there. Um, and this is my, my biggest show was was that, and that was the first time I traveled with Huey. And then after that, I think we went to Bolivia. We went. Oof. We stayed in Bolivia for a couple of days. We did a couple of shows over there, and. That's it. I mean, I mean we. Hey, man, it's pretty dope that you you know you have that experience. You know, I did, I did, I did. That's pretty. That's a pretty dope experience. And and and, and I learned a lot from that. Well, lot. yeah, because because for my own traveling reasons, from as a DJ, I, the stuff I learned from him, 
you know, and just talks we used to have. It's like, okay, so when I become a traveling DJ or travel more as a DJ, I know what to ask for. I didn't know about per diems. And I writers. I didn't know about writers and none of that. He but talked. it's pretty, so like I said, that's pretty crazy that you link up with this guy and then your first show, you know, you're with a famous guy. So it's like you're seeing already how famous people are getting treated. And so you're already like, okay, well, now I know what to look for. Mm-hmm. And that's, that. you know, that I, I think that's also what's made you stand out in your career in general. Yes, but, I learned that from Huey. Yes, yeah, that hey, that's what's up. Again, so, shout out to Huey. Thank and you so, that so chance. you mentioned something. You mentioned blends. Oh. Then DJ El Nino blends. You ha. got some. You got some pretty like. You got some pretty famous ones out here, man. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here front. You want to know which one is one of my favorite? It's twelve as midnight. Oh man, don't close your eyes. That one's pretty your dope. I know a lot of guys who still play that. Huh? I know a lot of guys who still play that. Uh, I got it. Like I, I queued. Like it's queued up. Like I play you got, it. Yeah. I, I play it. Thank trust you, me. Thank you. Um, and now I want to ask you a question about this. This specific. I don't know if you want to call it a break. Did you do this? Because it says DJ Nino. Yes, I did that. You did this. Yes, I did that. Legendary people. Oh, oh, Le- hold on, let me talk about that. Let me tell. You, let me tell you why that break is what it is. This is gonna be a surprise to you if I didn't tell you the story already. I, this story I don't know, so I'm very very excited. Really? Oh man, you're in the story actually. Huh? You're in the story. And I'll tell you what. Hold on. Shout out to myself. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Richie Rich, right? So Richie, I was doing mixtape with Ray Richie. Drop a bomb for Richie real quick. I'm sorry. So he hired me to DJ a location called Harborside in Stratford. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Legendary Sundays. Oof. So he hired me for that, right? And he was doing the Puerto Rican parade after party or something like that. I can't remember. So I wanted to go into this party um, with something different. I wanted to go in there and kill it. And, you know, I know my house game, so I'm like, I have to make something. And I was doing a lot of blends back then. I used to spend a lot of time doing stuff. So I created that party break overnight. Um, and, you know, it's basically become a staple for the parades. Everybody plays it. And it's 2006. I told Richie that story. He didn't, he didn't, he like, I don't think he really believed me. Like, <laughs> and he doesn't, uh, probably doesn't know how big now, it was, but it's because of his booking, because of him taking me to yeah, this place. Now, this event with Brenda K Star, by the way, she was the artist that they performed me. And I, Candela. I remember that. Night. You guys love Candela. And what were you doing? What were you recording these blends on? I was using Acid Pro 4.0. Oh, shout out to Acid Pro. I Oof. I I started on Acid. I started on, on, on Acid Pro, but uh, I forgot what version. It was later on, a, a few years later. I don't think it was four. I think it was like five or six. But um, but regardless of that, and so now you also made a legendary one. If I'm not mistaken, is it this one? Yes. This is the one that got played. Whoa. DJ El Nino, ladies and gentlemen. This was heavy. This was... Connecticut Radio played this a lot. They didn't even know it was me. Fucking Connecticut Radio, New York Radio, yes. fucking any Latin DJ, every Latin DJ was playing this. Yes. Now, by 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 this time, you're getting acapellas exclusively. Yes. Yes. The engineer who we didn't name? Yeah, exactly. Gave, exactly. Gave, he, he, he's going to remain anonymous yes. right now. Let's just call him anonymous. Yes. Mr. Let's just call him that guy. You know what? Let's call him that guy. That guy uh, <laughs> who's a Grammy-nominated engineer. This is not your typical pelagato. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Keep on talking. I'm going to write a name down and just say yes or no. But yeah, but, but keep on talking. He's a legendary engineer, and he worked on a lot of... No. No, okay. no, he's not. An, is he an engineer? I thought it might have been him because okay. because of the Huey relationship. Okay, well, I'll tell you what: the engineer, that person you named, and Huey were friends. They actually were roommates at one time. I know he was part. I mean, that person produced uh, uh, "Que Bonita Bandera," like all, all, all that stuff. Yes, um, yeah, they were actually roommates. Funny how how things come full circle, I guess. But the engineer, um, he engineered we sing a yande el tego he was like, just that guy he was he, just like, he was that guy he was that, that gave guy. it that sound so he was an engineer and i had a good relationship with him and because me and we were traveling he was he was roommates with huey and he was he was you're an lmp you're you're, you're an lmp yeah i was an lmp he knew me and he was working with dj nelson and doing all their stuff so he would give me a lot of stuff like a lot 
And when I mean a lot of stuff, it's not like, you know, people get an instrumental acapella. This guy would give me albums if I asked for them. You know what I'm saying? So he would give wow. me. Uh, so and I had this, this is stuff. so this acapella was was not obtainable. Nobody had. I this. know. Nobody ever. Trust me. Ever. Nobody had this. Right. So I got this acapella and I don't know why, <laughs> how I got the idea to do this blend. But I ended up doing and it it's actually me. one of the early. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. But it, that song was actually one of the early uh, reggaeton artists that was doing an up tempo thing. And around yes. this time, song like house was becoming popular again. Again, yes, house was was doing his. Uh, well, was, it, it was coming it, back. It, it was coming back, and it was more mainstream, and it was getting played, yes. especially in the Latin community. And this is before Pitbull, by the way. Um, yes, Pitbull wasn't you know wasn't a thing. Well, no. Well, well, did you do? That's the 75 Brazil Street. Yes. Did you do that blend before Pitbull came out with his version? I want to say 2007, 2006. This is way before Pitbull did his, did his version. Yeah, yeah. This okay, is, wow. A couple wow. Of years, at least two, three years before Pitbull wow. did his version. Don't quote me on that, but it, it's, yeah. it's, it's way before. So nobody could get a cappella, and I did, you know, I did, this, I did this thing, and, you know, it uh, kind of became a household name. I also did a merengue version to that song, too, and... um it kind of just became a thing. Like everybody Look at you playing. mashing up. Look at you mashing up early, early in the game, early in the game. <laughs> yes, yes. And you know, I give it to everybody. By then, I was doing mixtapes heavy. I had a good relationship with everybody on radio, from Cream to Casanova to Alex uh, to Precise. I was, I was friends. <coughs> hold, with on, all, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I admire all those people, but there's one people you uh, mentioned, Precise. Precise, of course, man. That's my guy so i i had a relationship with all of them so i you know obviously i emailed them them yeah you know the track and they got a lot of love and you know it's alex crazy. burned that fucking song out he, on the he radio. did he did he did and the only person i gave that acapella to because i ended up releasing it was and i threw, <coughs> because i had permission was him because he wanted to do something and i think um, he wanted to like make his like own version of that he wanted to yeah he did what he, you of know, that, he did uh, what that he did eventually, eventually the acapella got out to other people and then it's exactly. kind of like it, but, it, but it I already happens. had burning for two years at least exactly. prior to that so by then exactly. it's like who cares but, and, um, and and this is and this is is I I I, I want to stick on this but it, were you ready in in Latin DJ King um Latin DJ Kings that none, none of that existed that none of that existed okay. none of that existed so none of that existed I, now I did um I was part of Wow, this is even before. Let me see. Um, when I started doing Latin edit, and I guess we, I guess we're gonna get to the conversation, yeah. right? Um, you probably wanted to talk no, about yeah, it. Oh yeah, let's do it. Let's jump into um, it. Th- before the whole edit remix game, whatever you want to call it, in the Latin music industry, there was uh, American websites who were starting to feature <coughs> um, Latin blends. Um, I was recruited. Um, let me see. I was part of a website called Drama Mix which I don't know how I got invited or heard of them, <laughs> but by, but I joined them. I was part of them. Um, me, Scooter, all these guys that if I mention who are big names now, you'll be like, really? We all came from there, Drama Mix. Uh, me, Scooter, uh, I'm trying to think, Beat Breaker, all those guys, we all came from there. Wow, you're dropping some dope legendary. Yeah, guys. some guys. Who, Especially who, in the editing game. Exactly, yeah. As a the whole. former editor and somewhat of an editor now, I know about those guys, trust yeah, me. Yeah, so I, I was part of them with Drama Mix, and then <laughs> while being with Drama Mix, um, I also started working with Club Bangers. Club Bangers were very known for Ooh. doing um, vinyl yeah. know, blends and Press stuff ups. like that. Yeah, they were... Um, uh, they, they, they were the same as Crook and Clan. They were, yeah, they were yeah, right exactly, there. exactly, exactly. Yeah, shout out to them. So the party I, break world. Exactly. If you want to, if, if, if you want to give call it a name. that, yeah. <laughs> so I was part of Club Bangers. I was part of of um, Drama Mix, and then from there, um, Drama Mix kind of dissolved. I, I, they sold it to somebody else, and I, I forgot what happened. Uh, so then, kind of everybody kind of left different location, you know, different things, and because of um, I don't know how, but I became friends with Riz. With DJ Riz from Crooklyn Oh my Pans. God, DJ Riz. So bro. Riz and Sister Hands, they, I, I wasn't the best editor, so they didn't directly put me down with their website, but. You're talking about Crooklyn Clan. Yes, uh, but they had a guy who does Latin videos, who does videos, who was Spanish, do my mashups in video. Ooh. So my videos early. Were, yes, my videos. This is early, very early, early. in the video game. Yes. Wow. Yeah, and shout, shout out to him. His name is Julian Serrano. Was Julian Serrano has been doing video mixing 
prior to Serato, prior before it became a thing. This yeah. is I can't even tell you how early this was. This that's is crazy. Early, 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 that's early, crazy. The early in the foresight game. on that, then, bro. Early. I can't even imagine how he had, like like equipment wise what the fuck he was doing. I, I don't even know. Yeah, but yeah. shout out to him, Julian, dope dude. Um, so Julian uh, did my stuff. So my stuff was on Crooked Clan, and um. I tried joining Crook and Clan, and they were taking open submissions, and I and I submitted my uh, Calabria brand, a blend that I did with Cat de Luna. Okay. And you remember that one, right? So I did that, and uh, I wasn't picked because they ended up picking like some of these other oh, guys. Is, like, is that this, right? Yeah, yeah, it's that. Yeah. I'm just skip it through it so people can. Yeah. That was featured on the on the LMP 2007 mixtape. There you go, ladies I, and gentlemen. That blend was actually done for that mixtape, and then I kind of made it a, a full track. Yeah. So. It's the sound exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we sounded exclusive. Well, yeah, especially true. especially you, especially if you were the one making them, you sounded, you know, the point, you know, you always want to sound different, and so. And the fact that you're getting these acapellas, I mean. Yeah. Shout out to. I, I mean, I guess this source I can say shout out to Loren Medina at. Uh, Sony, uh, Sony Tropical and Sony Urbano, who um, they hook you up. She she blessed me. She like through her, I met a lot of these other producers <laughs> to come after and people, and I was able to you know keep my exclusivity of getting everything because of Lorraine Lorraine Medina. Wow. She was based out of Miami. I think she lives in in L.A. now, but she was based out of Miami. She was the head of Sony Tropical, Sony Urbano, which had Voltio, which had. Um, Cat de Luna, we had all these people. That's why I got drops from her and a whole bunch of stuff from her. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, shout out to Lauren Medina. So, I submitted that. Never took, you know, I never got taken in, but I was already doing my thing and I was still, I, I was part of a lot of forums. Back then, forums were really popular. Yes, of course. So, I was getting my blends everywhere, everywhere. And then I was just known, like, people knew, they knew my <coughs> drop. So, everybody knew me. I was you know, sort of popular then. I was already traveling, doing whatever. And, um, they ended up opening a website years after uh, called Crack for DJs. Yes, I remember that. And they had uh, one of the, the the best editors that they had, who happened to be from Connecticut. I didn't know he was from Connecticut till like late in the game. Well, I, till a couple of years in. Shout out to Danny Diggs, and Danny Oof. Diggs took me on as when they opened, they debuted the website Crack for DJs. I was the first ten DJs that they took. So once again, you're very. This is now another. A, a group that you're very that you're that you're early on in the group and exactly you're, you're, this is you're, before Latin remix came yeah before well you no know. what i was saying like there goes another group that you that you were part of like the first the first yes. batch yes the, the first the, batch the first batch in crack for djs and there again it's because riz uh recommended me to talk to danny and danny liked what i was doing and he kind of to he danny Danny Diggs, yeah. Speaking yes. of Danny, I remember I hit him up uh, when I first started this podcast because yeah. that's another dude. Especially he's, he's not known, like, in, in, I guess in the Latin game, he's not, even though what? he's done a lot of dope Latin edits, he's not crazy he, Latin he's not edits. Known, he's not known in the Latin music And business. there's DJs out there that, the thing is, now, like, the, the songs get tagged wrong, and so you mm -hmm. never, so it's just like, like that party break by mine you played. Everybody took credit for that. <laughs> that Puerto Rico party break, yeah. <laughs> even even, even that I have it on the DJ Nino just to let you know. You do? Okay, okay. Real quick, we talked about that song Calabria, and you and me have a history with this song. Yeah. So do. real quick, I kind of just want to dabble into this because we are we are. I I, I want to jump into a few more things. So this song right here, I'm I, I'm 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 going. This is me early on in my DJ career, and I'm going out and in Stanford at this time, at this specific time. You ready to drop bombs when you start saying stuff? Then? <laughs> you gotta have some bombs. Well, well, I, I kind of so. Uh, Thursday Turtle, yes. Sunday Latin Night, legendary. Yes. Very, very shout honored. Out to also, Carlos and Alex Pique. Oh, oof, yes, yes. Shout out to them. Very honored. Also, I'm very honored. I, I, I was able to be part of that. You know, I, I had my time, and you know, not to look back, and you know. That's a legendary night, especially for the Latin community on Sundays. Anyway, so you were DJing, yeah, and you pl and this song like just came out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it, um, it, it was it, it was fairly new, yeah, it and it was, but new. it was ringing. Yeah, was it it track. was one of the this when the house was making a comeback. This again. is and and this I'm telling you like when you drop this, people will lose their fucking minds. Yes, 
And at this time, I, I mean, was, it was fairly new. I don't think I want to say they were losing their minds, but it got them going because it wasn't there yet. Yeah, it wasn't there yet, but it was it was getting there. But the thing is, so me, I already heard this is and so this is this is prior, by the way, this is prior to before she passed away because she died. Rest in oh, peace. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. I, I did yes, hear yes, that. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Rest in peace to her. But this, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand something. You know, this is way before Shazam, ladies and gentlemen. So if you didn't know a song. You you couldn't just Shazam it. There was no Shazam. You had to like do your homework. So and and thing is, at this time, I read, I already heard on the radio in a few times, and I was like, yo. And this guy DJ El Nino's in front of me, rocking the place, dropped this, and I was just like, yo. And in my mind, I was like, yo, I'm gonna go ask this guy what's the name of the song. And then, you know, that's kind of frowned upon, not frowned upon, but you know. But I was like, you know what? Let me just let me test the waters, and so you take it on from there. What happens there? So, so basically, I'm DJing in, in this Sunday night, and you come through. You were reaching a couple other people. I can't yeah, 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 exactly. We were chilling. That was the spot, though. That was the spot where we went. Yeah. That was the spot that we went. So you come over and you ask me, "Yo, can you please tell me what that record is?" And I, <laughs> and I told you the name, right? I told you the name, right? I didn't. I didn't yeah, I, yeah, I told you the name. Yeah, I told you what it was, and that was the first time I've ever actually uh, seen you. I think I have seen your name before, but didn't really know <clears> you, but. That's um yeah you asked me what that track was and yeah 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 that was and, and, and to this day that track gets burned a lot yeah no and and, and, and if you it drop it, re revival it had it's revival when Pitbull redid it of course and revival but. and DJs have used that you know that beat if it's used right it could still be used in the blend or whatever yes it, 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 that that beat's legendary that yeah, beat definitely those trumpets are just shout so, out to Enur E N U R yes R I P also R I P also so 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 let's get back to the to the editing game like you said. So what's going on? Let's pick up where we're at. What's right, going so, on? So Hul Crack Hulia, for DJs. Hul Hulia, yeah, I was in Crack for DJs. And then from Crack for DJs, I met all these other guys who, you know, We're whatever. talking what year? Eight, nine, 2007. Seven, seven? seven okay, 2000, eight, 2008. Maybe nine, yeah, okay. seven, eight or nine. That time uh, frame. So I was doing that. Yeah, I was doing that. And then I eventually joined. Um, I was part of Get My Remix too. The, uh, eventually, I kind of maybe overstretched myself because I was all over the place. I yeah. was in. I was in, I was still in Crack for DJs. I was and what I would do is like I would release it on Crack for DJs. Yeah. And then I would release like I say another record on someplace else. And then I would you know give this person this track and then, you know what yeah I'm exactly exactly. I would exactly. do that so I was able to you were ping ponging it exactly. <laughs> I was able to release multiple you know in different places. So I would do like three or four or five and then give everybody a different one and then give each other whatever and then I was able to switch them up. And that's how that's how you know I did that for a while. Uh, get my remix, uh, club bangers, crack for DJs. I was part of AV8. Um, you were part of AV8. Yes, I was. What came out of AV8? Uh, the Puerto Rico party rig was part of AV8. That was the AV8. Did the, that get pressed up in record or no? Uh, I don't think so. Oh wow! I think I was just MP3. I don't think so. No, I no. guarantee that I, would be dope though. Like uh, yo, no, the, no. yo, yeah. I, I'm pretty. Just, I got my own vinyl. Yeah, yo, that would be crazy. Yeah, I'm not. It didn't get pressed up in vinyl. No, that I know of. No, it did not. Um, you gotta ask around because that would be dope. That's definitely to. I don't know. I mean, but by then, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know already what? Serato no, no, days. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, no, 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 but no, it no, would no. be dope to ask. <laughs> yeah, man. But yes, I was our ABA. I, there's a whole list. I was part of a lot, a lot of websites, and um, um, and then basically, eventually, I I um, landed uh Latin Remix Kings. Yes, Little J started Latin Remix Kings, and I knew Little J from you know. From from forever actually, yeah. I knew him forever in a day since maybe 2002, and um, he's from Long Island, right? If I'm not mistaken, it, originally yes, Long Island, and then he moved to Miami. Mm -hmm. I think he was doing radio over there. Yeah, no, he moved because a relative of his was sick. Okay, um, don't quote me on that, but yeah, I yeah. think he moved because okay. of that, and then eventually he came back up north. But that's how I know him. Um, he, he started that website. Now, and, once again, were you part of the f original batch of uh, Latin Remix Kings? Or, 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 or I think I was part of the second batch. Okay. Uh, the first batch was him at, at uh, Soul Tricks. A, a guy he mentored, Soul Tricks. Yes. Um, Soul Tricks is going to speak his piece one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out to my homie DJ Soul Tricks. <laughs> yes, yes. He might do, the story might change. He might say something different. But if I remember correctly, and go, you know, going from my little Jay told me he, you know, because okay, no, 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 that's correct. He was mentoring him. Okay, so well, I'm saying they have a, a, a I don't want to get too much into that because that's that's for Soul Tricks to speak his piece. And I would love for Soul Tricks to speak 
speak his piece if to have little jay on as a guest also to for, because it's it's still it, it, it's it, part of history it's part of it's history part of where the thanks to these guys is part is the reason it's, why the latin game is where it is exactly you especially know, for djs yeah it, like these guys were making you guys i don't want to say these guys you guys were making you guys were the fort in the front front and also and you know we got to give credit where credit's due also uh cream and and and, and casanova yes. they were doing their thing with mashing up you know hip-hop vocals and over reggaeton beats and you guys were providing a service for people like us to sound different one and it was something it was something new and it, and it started making our lives easier yes yes because i mean now it's just you know you know where it is now but yeah but is that and, and like you know to have an intro to a fucking song was just like oh my god yeah it wasn't heard of I mean, yeah, like and, and Jay basically is a and, is a father of that whole that whole thing. And yeah, because that's that's he specialized only in Latin and then doing intros and stuff like that. Um, I was doing more blends and doing stuff like what you heard. Yeah, that's where I was featured on. All, but all, you all specialized in it. And, and, yeah, yeah, and you were good. Was. And 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 thank you, you. They weren't sloppy. They weren't off nah, key. And, nah, and this is I try, I try not to. Some no, of, no. Some and, of and, them were not. You know, not you know nothing out of this world. But some of them were were pretty dope. I got a, a lot of you know I got a lot a lot of play, and um, yeah. Then I joined Latin Remix Kings, you know that that came into be, and that's where I was part of the second. No, I was part of the first batch, I think. Of Latin uh, Remix, I, yes, I I think I want to take that back. I was part of the first batch, um, because he knew I was already doing them, and I was featuring a lot of other websites, and I know Soul Tricks because we were all part of this forum. Yes, the forum. I I. I TJ's DJs is the forum. I still, you know, get people I've asking heard, me about that. I've heard That's where I used to leak a lot of like my blends were leaked through there. I used to put a lot of singles and my acapellas. Like a lot of acapellas that roamed back in those days, guys who, who've been around long enough <coughs> will tell you that, yeah, they saw me posting those because I used to get, you know, singles and stuff from these regular labels and they would tell me, yo, spread that around. And that's how I would do it through the forums. And that's why I met Soul Tricks, who was an up and coming DJ who was doing his thing. And yeah. eventually, then, you know, we became part of like and Remix Kings and. And you, know, you guys made your own history on that. Yes, on that. and that you know, and then th then the business is, is where it's at now. Yeah, exactly. And and um, so just so shout out to everybody who who bought my blends. A lot of DJs got them from me directly, but everybody who bought my blends and um, and this is this is another funny story. Um, the 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 who I consider to be the best in the game for many years now, Lex, Lex was Bro. one. He was one of my customers, and so was Santana. Well, oh. he he, I know him. Because the Chambonea yeah. um, intro that he did. Yeah, the Chambonea intro. Wait, wait you know and what? You're to, right. Shout out to Johnny Mambo, though, who put me on to, who gave it to me. Uh, and because Johnny Mambo's friends were Lex. And that's how um, I know Johnny Mambo from because, you know, he's been around forever. So Johnny Mambo was friends with Lex. And Johnny Mambo gave me that. And that's how I've heard of Lex, and that's how he became. And that's why the reason I think I would say, if I had to look from my point of view, it, he's where he's at because of that. Because everybody was playing. I mean, I still play. I still got it. Oof. But you know what, Nino? We've been so we're gonna kind of jump really quick. So how did the how 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 do you land Van Dome? Because now right. now the people that listen to this that are non DJs now this is where people know you from. How do you land Van Dome? All right. So um, back that was in two thousand eight. By then I was already a promoter. And <clears throat> when you and Richie were doing um, Five Senses, I think it was in New Haven. Was it Five Senses what it was called? Yeah, Oracle Five Senses. Oracle Five Okay, when you guys were doing that, I was doing a spot in Waterbury called Criollo's Cafe. Uh, those were my Shout out to Criollo's. Shout yes. out to Criollo's. Legendary Waterbury people. Stand up. Yes, that was my my very first, not my very first club that I promoted, but that's where I kind of like took off a little bit. Mm -hmm. I started doing, I did, that's when I first did my, my track, well, not there, but around that same time is when I did my first traffic light party, 2007, and I did my first, uh, 2008, and my first, you know, blackout party and all that. I started all that then, and um, I did that in Creolas, and I had, I did okay. I didn't kill it, but I did, I was doing okay because all the young people my age will go to you guys' party because you guys had, you know, you had everything on Smash back then. You guys had all the, the 18, 18 and over. Uh, yeah, Oracle was 18 and over on Saturdays. Yes, you, you guys had that. You guys had that market cornered. Um, so you guys were doing that, and I was trying to, you know, get my Creole thing going, and I, I, I did pretty good. So anyway, by then I was traveling, um, and this is, I think, something we touched on already. I, I, was, I was going all over the place, you know, but I was fairly on. Uh, if you were not from Waterbury, you didn't know me in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I was unknown. I did do a couple clubs, like I worked in Diamante Cafe in Hartford, uh, a Club Cubano in, in East Hartford, I think it was, and 
I've done uh, d- different things in, in all over Connecticut, but I wasn't known. Exactly, exactly. I wasn't known. Exactly. I wasn't known. So there was a girl that that's related to me. Uh, we're not immediate uh, relations. She's a uh, friend of the family. Yeah, she she's like second cousin or something like that. Okay, yeah. I don't remember exactly right now. So she was a bartender there, right? And she always had told the owner that we need to do a, um, uh, a Dominican night. It's what she was referring to. Actually. I'm going to go back a little bit even further. I'll continue with this in a second. I'll go back. I had a friend when I was shopping t- around to get clubs. I did a mixtape. And I had a friend who would go clubbing a lot. I was still underage. He would go clubbing a lot. And he would bring my mixtapes. And we went and he took the he went to Van Dome once and gave the, the tape to uh, Nick, who's still there. You know who he is. Yeah, of course. Shout out to Nick. He gave him to Nick. He was, he was the manager then. And Nick uh, interviewed me for a position. I went there to meet with him. This was in 97. Um... He in in ninety eight. He damn. So you know Nick since back then. I know Nick since back. He doesn't wow. remember that. He doesn't. Cause I've had this conversation <laughs> with him a thousand times. He doesn't remember. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. So I if want, you know Nick, that was just that yeah that, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he interviewed me back then, and they they wanted to do a Latin Wednesday back then with the radio. This is in ninety eight. Okay. He wanted to do a Latin night on Wednesdays, and it kind of fell through. It never really happened. Um. But he did interview me. I went in there. I asked him all kinds of things about music and what do you guys play here, whatever. I remember asking him, you guys play reggaeton, which reggaeton was bubbling by then. He was like, no, we don't play that. We play strictly salsa. Merengue bachata. Uh, salsa. Uh, no, no, bachata no, no, wasn't no, no, even. No, exactly, exactly. Bachata wasn't even in vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bachata mind. was getting played. It's just, I, I, I said it know. just to say it because that's just like, it, it, it just. But, it's but, what it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, what no, it is. But, but it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't back then. It was more merengue and, and <laughs> salsa and freestyle, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um. So that's that's how I came across Van Dome's radar. All right, so um, this girl, she was uh, she worked in Van Dome, and she told me we should do a Dominican. We should hire this DJ. I have a cousin with a DJ who do really good. And like I said, by by then, uh, I was unknown in Connecticut, but I was traveling a lot. Like I was sort of famous. Um, I was doing a lot of different things, and you know, by then this is MySpace days, right? Um, to MySpace. Yes, MySpace helped me a lot in my career, and I, I kind of want to get to that point. And I guess it's a good time to bring it up. Um, I had a lot of friends in MySpace, and I, I was I was able to travel a lot because of MySpace. Like I became famous because I, I would credit MySpace for be, you know besides the mixtapes for becoming famous because I kind of was all over the place because of MySpace. I got to go to Texas and blah blah blah, but it, oh, was, wow. it was all because of MySpace. So she followed. She had me on MySpace and. She, you know, oh, this guy's all over the place, you know, and the owner didn't know me. So she asked him to please give me a chance. And I guess, you know, years passed and he finally decided to give me a chance. And I had applied. Like I told you, 98, I went. And then when Cicero was there, I remember giving his manager, Jeff, his manager back then, one of my mixtapes and tell him, yo, you know, see if they would put me on. But nothing ever came out of it. So she asked him to give me for him to give me, you know, a chance and. She, uh, he said yes. He agreed, and um, we did a party, Dominican Independence Day in February, in two thousand eight or seven. I can't remember exactly, uh, but I can go on MySpace and look for the flyer. So we are here. So she, he MySpace. gave me a chance, and okay, so that I promoted heavy. I did what I had to do. I invited everybody. I was like, you guys got to come to this. This is a kind of a big deal for me. Come, come. And I remember that day we got a massive 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 snowstorm and let me tell you how massive it was it took me two hours to get to new haven from waterbury and i'm like you know he said that he was still wanted to um he said he wanted to go through it i'm like okay fine I, you know i'll go i went and i'm like oh i hope he doesn't judge me based on you know based on the amount of people that i brought or based on this because there's nobody here there was probably 70 people in the whole club and the, and was van Dome as big as it is now Back it was, then, yeah, still same size, same size. Yeah, two man. rooms still. Yeah, yeah, two rooms. This club was, you know, was was doing over a thousand people. You know, eleven, twelve hundred people. This club was still what it is. The what you know, Van Dome be no exactly. For? That's it's, what it was then. So I went, and you know, like I said, this is a normal Friday. They would do a couple, you know, a thousand plus people. And that day, we probably had seventy people in the whole club. So I'm like, yo, this guy's never gonna bring me back. <laughs> so I ended up doing my thing, and um. He said he liked my music and that, you know, he would ask me to come back. I was like, thank you. I appreciate that because nobody was there to really enjoy my music the first time. So then he hit this, you know, he messaged me through MySpace. That's how we communicated. 
he messaged me and he would say, okay, so what Saturday, what Fridays you have available or, or Saturdays? No, it was Fridays. What Fridays you have available? And I would, you know, check my calendar. I was like, all right, well, I can give you this date. You know, I'm, I'm going to be in town. And um, so you started as as like a guest. Like I, I was a guest. Yes. Guest. Uh, okay. I went from being a guest once. So then bringing back again and me doing good. And then he sort of put me in rotation. So every, you know, two months I was there. Every every every, every other month I was there. And then eventually he liked me so much. So he asked me, like, can you know, you want to be here once a month? And I said, sure. No problem. He was paying me good money. So I'm like, okay, I'll stay local, make good money. Yeah, sure. And then time kept going by. And then after eight months, I want to say, of me being in, in, you know, there once a Friday, being in rotation, whatever. He asked me if I would, you know, take over Friday nights. He asked me if I would be the resident <coughs> DJ. He said, listen, we need a spark. We need somebody new. And, you know, I like the way you work. And, See if you're interested in doing it. And I said, by then I was already promoting. I was doing Crayola. This was yeah. like, you know, 2007 or 2008. So I told them, yes, I, I would. Okay, but we we will have to do things, you know, my way. This is how I want to do it. You know, because I already had my ideas uh, and I already was getting my feet wet with promotion. And I was doing okay, you know, fairly well. And I had an idea how, the way I wanted to execute it. So he agreed. And that's basically history. I went from, you know, being there one time to rotation to taking over Fridays and then eventually I ended up taking over Saturdays too and I'm not DJing but like I started running it yeah running Saturdays and then I even did you know stuff on Sundays for a while too so I was basically went from you know being one there one day to basically running everything yeah hey man give it up to you man because it's legendary now man and you've yeah, been and that's what word that you younger generation know me from is from there well, I mean, I not you, but you yeah, know. yeah, exactly, exactly. Some of the people listening, and, and and yeah, exactly. And thing is, you're associated with the club now. You know what I'm saying? Like when yeah. you bring up Van, Van Dome, since since you are the one. And the thing is, people that don't see you there on Saturdays. I mean, you know, you're still behind the scenes. You know, yeah, doing, I'm still doing doing things. Yes, I do. I do. I hire the DJs on Saturdays. Yes, I do DJ, and I then I eventually i did the rotation for the warehouse too so i was you know in charge of bringing djs for both exactly. rooms i did that for a couple of years and now i just stick to the main room and you know and fridays i still promote and i still dj every so often i bring more guests than anything but that's how people know me from from random and that's yeah. kind of my history with them and that's how i came into the scene definitely in, in connecticut <laughs> in connecticut. connecticut now we actually been recording for a while now so we're gonna we're gonna i think we're gonna have to do this again nino yeah, I'll come back. I mean, we're gonna, we said in the beginning we're gonna do a couple parts. Yeah, man, and you know what? I'm gonna be touching some things, and I think we kind of no. But you know what? I like what we did. We history, music history, yes. your history, and bouncing yes. around. And people think is the DJs that are listening. The people that that you know they need to understand that you know, especially when we talked about like the whole editing game and the remix game, mm -hmm. they need to understand you know where it came from and what are some of the roots from it. You yeah. know, and you're one of the. It's, it's like let's talk about it. You were there. Yeah, you yeah, lived yeah. it, and you were part of it. So it's like, yeah, yeah. Why not? I mean, I was definitely one of the first ones to do like Latin Latin mashups. Yeah, yeah. Not the first one, obviously not. Cause no, no, no. I'll be that'll be too broad. But but you're definitely in that category. I you're was yeah. I yeah. was there. You know, prior I'll, to the I'll Remix you, Kings, yeah, exactly. And to the Little Jays and all these people, I was already doing it. You know, what I'm saying prior to them. So so no, yeah, man. You're 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 out here, man. Good you're times. out here. Yeah, good times. And so. So we're going to leave that there. We're going to just touch on a few things. Um, but I, what I'm going to do with this episode, I'm going to make this a two-parter. So this is going to be okay. uh, part one and part two of part one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, Spread man. And, 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 and the thing is, I think there's there's going to be a few people I'm going to have to do this with because because there's just you know there's just so much to touch on, like you said. And, 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 and there we're not even – we haven't even touched, you know – you know, we haven't even touched on on certain things and 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 you know traveling stories, which let's not even get into. We'll be I here. Have. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> you we're talking about the CD books, carrying those CD books. Yes, yes. So um, we'll talk about some traveling stuff, which you did later in your career. The the um some of the some of the nights that you were also that you were also behind. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, we'll get into all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we didn't even touch on that. Right? No, nah, no, nah, like man, the I, younger, younger. I got exactly. if we have to call them something, I'll call them the younger, younger. The younger, younger, younger generation know me from Wednesday nights. From Wednesdays, from the last Wednesdays. five, six years, exactly. you know, clubbing people who exactly. turn twenty one. That's where they know me from. Yeah, you know, man, from and, and, and and that was a big impact in Connecticut, um, especially yes. at that time when you came around because it was it was just really you know there was very it, it was very odd to to have. 
popping. Not to say there weren't off. You know, I consider Mondays through Wednesdays off, like real off nights. The, the only thing, I mean, this is gonna be for the part two, but like the only thing happening on Wednesdays back then, there were a couple sporadic salsa nights. Yeah, yeah, exactly, well, exactly. That, that's it's, all there was. Uh, I, I was about to get it. Like it, it's more chill vibes, and, and yeah, it was yeah, more yeah. like theme, like a salsa or like yeah. or whatever. It, but it was very Craig here. G had his Wednesday. Night yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was very far Craig in between. G in time, yeah. And so, but you managed to have a successful Wednesday night. Yes. Which was crazy, Thank and you, you. And, and and so it, it was just. I was on the heart of. I didn't believe in it neither in the beginning. I was like, <laughs> so um, so real quick, I do have something called keeping a twelve hundred. I don't know if okay. you know what this is, but you could kind of get. It's kind of something you don't like, um, uh, uh, either a pet peeve of of yours, something you don't like the D, it, uh, that goes on in the DJ world. Oh man, well, that's what I got Facebook for though. <laughs> I talk about it all. Well, day. you got a mic now, bro. You got a microphone now, man. Um, just something that pops in your head. What's something that pops in your I'm, head? I'm, I'm definitely not ready for this question. Uh, there's many things that I dislike about about my industry, and if you have me on Facebook, you would know because I speak about them often. And sometimes, uh, you know, I mock certain things that they certain do. trends, certain trends. Yes, I guess we can. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Certain trends in, in this business because I don't come from that. You know, I don't come from the. Well, if you if for the people that have been paying attention, you know you you know you you just come from a different era of 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 DJing and grinding. Yes, exactly. I, I, I did completely, completely. Um, you know, a, a lot of I don't know. I guess I I can't think of. I mean, I could tell you a whole bunch of things that I dislike about DJs and and whatever, but. All right, so you know what? We'll get you keeping the twelve hundred for the part two, so you can get. Yeah, it. yeah, let's do that. So yeah. maybe, yeah, maybe you can ask some questions because I mean, I can, can talk about the whole promotion game, how it is now. How, well, well, with you, I kind of want to leave it with DJ because okay. you know, you know, but 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 like I said, we could get back into that. We could get back into that. Um, and um, so so give them your social media. Where can people find you at? All right, my social media is very simple. Very simple, and this is uh, this is some free advice I'm going to give you, DJs. You want to establish uh, an identity online. You want everything and everywhere to have the same name, and this goes for businesses too. I, I, I tell people all that all the business owners the same thing. You know, I'm uh, if you need to find me anywhere on any social media everywhere because I have uh, pages everywhere. It's always going to be at DJ El Nino LMP El Nino. El Nino, Nino sin la ñ. Oh, okay, okay. DJ Nino. at uh, exactly like that or, or hashtag or or la arroba, arroba D J E L N I N O L M P. DJ El Nino L M P at um, YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, everywhere. Instagram, everywhere, 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 everywhere. It's important. You you type that in and you're gonna find me. Yeah, I think yeah, identity no. is very important. Yeah, and that's that's honestly I online mean, identity. Yes. Uh, wasn't to say um, I I. I'm, for everything across, you know, for me also is to say it's just that that one thing at DJ Sutter CT, which uh, you uh, ladies and gentlemen can follow me at if you want to follow the podcast, it's at TSD underscore podcast, and if you want to email the podcast, it's the Spinners Digest uh, at gmail dot com. El Nino, I've been you know. I've, I've, you know, since I started this podcast, you were one of the, you're definitely one of the, the CT vets that I hit you up very Thank early. You. And you I did, you did, you did. And, and, and I told you I wanted you on and here. And I couldn't make it because the, the time it was, you know. No, no, it, it was cool. But hey, man, I'm glad we made it happen. Yes. I'm glad we made this happen. Yes, I'm glad yes, that you yes. got to uh, share your history, you know. Some of it, I guess, because we <laughs> some of it, but still. but you know what is enough for for people to really be like, oh shit, like you know what I'm saying, and yeah. and that's really the point of this podcast is because I've said it before, you know, I've I've been in the I've been in conversations with people like you and other veteran DJs where I hear where we just start bullshitting, you know, after the club and we start talking about stuff, and then I I've always heard these amazing stories, and I'm just like, why nobody knows about this. This is, yeah. you know, yeah, what I'm you saying. You told me that before. You wanted people to know my story. And, yeah, and and and, 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 so and, and, and no, and, and there's and there's and there's countless, especially in Connecticut. And that's the point of me putting a platform to kind of thank you. I, I on behalf of me and I guess all the DJs, thank you so much. Yeah, for, man, and and, for and doing and that for us. It's 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 just because I. I always like to give it up to the people that came before me or, you know, came before me, after me. But I always like to give it up to veterans. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. And, and, and sharing their experiences. And because, yes. like I said, people see us at the club. People know us. People shake our hands. 
take a picture with us, uh, drink with us. But they, you know, you know, you know, you know, we have our our, 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 our crazy in and outs on how we got to to where we're at. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I have some stories. Exactly. We're gonna save that for part two. Like, exactly. We're gonna also, save that for- you know, also the club rundown. We'll save that for part two. Well, 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 well. well you just mentioned that every Friday, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Friday at Vendome. I've been there for exactly around, ten years. About. Um, I'm there every Friday. I I'm the promoter of the night. Saturdays is kind of my traveling day. I usually exactly and, 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 and that's where people could find you at, and yeah. they could find out everything. Yeah, if you follow me on social media, you know where I'm at on Saturdays. Exactly, I hop around uh, from state to state, or even here locally. And Sundays, I have a new night that I started in in uh, Norwalk in South Norwalk. Yes, uh, call it Maximo Sundays in Soho Bar. So I'm there on Sundays too, um, and that's basically my rundown. And then yeah. you know Wednesdays is coming soon. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wednesdays is coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. Los miércoles no se respetan. Again. Coming soon. (laughs) Again. (laughs) Again. (laughs) Yeah. That's coming, though, bro. That's coming. Let me tell you. Hold on. And I think I texted you. Be scared. First, be afraid. (laughs) Be very afraid. It's coming. Be scared. I think I texted you this one day. I was like, yo, you need to get locked up for making this night. (laughs) Bro, let me just say, my first time. That I ever went to your Wednesday night, and it, it was the first time that I DJed there. It was like it, it like it, it was like like it, it was like like within the first month of it, or the first mm-hmm. like two months of it, or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Literally, I remember. Okay, literally that day, blacked out, lost my phone, got in trouble with my wife. Like it was just, <laughs> and that's ninety percent of the people that go there. That's their experience. So it's just it's been something crazy. Nino, yeah. once again, I want to thank you for being a part of this. Thank you. Thank TSD, you we want to thank you. The Gorilla Podcast Network. Like yes. I said, follow also the Gorilla Podcast Network where it's I, I've said it again. I mean, I've said it before. This is a, a new thing, a new and beautiful thing coming out of Connecticut. Connecticut has a lot uh, of dope things um, uh, on the uprising, and this is one of them, the, the Gorilla Podcast Network. We got right now at this time, I think we got currently four or five shows, and we got more shows on the way. Shout out to uh, Self Mathematics and the Night Owl Studios where we're recording this. If you do want to record your podcast, get in touch with the uh with uh the gorilla podcast network that's at gorilla podcast network on instagram and all and all and all social medias tsd this was a pleasure till the next one we are out of here adios agale This is a Gorilla Podcast Network production.